Welcome to the final literary critic that we will be discussing in the module Classical Literary Criticism. In this video, I will be discussing Longinus. Longinus was a Greek rhetorician and a poet critic and he is famous for his theory of sublimity. The seminal work of Longinus is titled On the Sublime. So Longinus was a Greek rhetorician and a poet critic who belonged to the early part of the first century. He was a philosopher of the Neoplatonic school and taught rhetoric at Athens. His literary treatise On the Sublime is one of the seminal works of classical literary criticism. The thesis states that literature has at its end sublimity that lifts one out of oneself. The masterpieces of classical Greek literature, according to Longinus, are considered great only because of this quality of sublimity. Literature, by its magic of expression, not only pleases but excites, moves, transports and elevates. On the Sublime is considered as second only to Aristotle's poetics in its influence. For Longinus, sublimity is an inspiring outburst of revelatory illumination. He emphasizes on the literature of power as distinguished from the literature of knowledge whose sole purpose is to teach. The effect of this literature of power is achieved not by argument but by revelation or illumination. Literature is vision and makes us see with the eye of the spirit and fills us with awareness. Its function is sacramental. The truly sublime has an uplifting effect. The readers are lifted out of themselves and carried to a new realm of experience and perception and filled with ecstasy as if they themselves had created what they see and hear. Longinus has declared that the sublime consists in a certain loftiness and consummateness of language and it is by this and this alone that the greatest poets and prose writers have won preeminence and lasting fame. He goes on to say that for a work of genius does not aim at persuasion but ecstasy or lifting the reader out of himself. So he defines sublimity as the echo of greatness of spirit. Sublimity is the moral and imaginative power of the writer that pervades a work of art. Thus, for the first time, greatness in literature is ascribed to qualities innate in the writer rather than in the art. The sublime effect, according to Longinus, is attained by exalted writers through revelation or illumination. Its effect upon the mind of the reader is immediate just like a flash of lightning upon the eye. Its appeal is not through reason, but through imagination. According to Longinus, the sublime, at the critical moment, shoots forth and tears the whole thing to pieces like a thunderbolt, and in a flash reveals all the author's power. Sublime art and literature can transport and lift us out of ourselves by a power which confirms judgment, eclipses mere reason, and illumines a subject with the vividness of lightning. lightning. Therefore, Longinus was the first critic who talked extensively about the impact of literature on the reader. This later led to theories such as reader response theories, reception aesthetics, and so on. And so Longinus is often considered as the forerunner of practical criticism.
Longinus lists five sources of sublimity in literature. The first two sources are innate qualities in the writer. The first source is grandeur of thought that arises from the vigor and nobility of the mind, the ability of the writer to seize upon great ideas. The second refers to powerful emotions or strong passions. These first two sources, which are the most important, refer to the state of the poet's soul. Sublimity of expression in art arises from sublimity of thought. It is a quality of the mind and the soul and is a product of both nature and art. To quote Longinus, sublimity is the echo of a great soul. So the author must be free from ignoble thoughts in order to produce anything that is admirable and worthy of immortality. Longinus points out a striking contrast to illustrate this. He says, uh, he refers to the Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer. According to Longinus, the Iliad is the better work because it was written at the height of Homer's inspiration and creative power. It is full of action and conflict. The Odyssey, on the other hand, for the most part, consists of mere narrative and reveals a decline of passion and intensity. The second source, powerful emotion, stresses on the importance of giving full play to the emotions. Again, Longinus emphasizes that only the loftiest souls experience true, strong passions. The next three sources of the sublime are the result of art. They are skill in the use of appropriate figures of speech, nobility of diction, which includes using metaphors and new words, and dignity of composition, which includes the appropriate arrangement of words. So the third source, skill in the use of speakers of speech, this adds to the beauty of language and style. Longinus says, a figure is at its best when the very fact that it is a figure escapes attention. Uh, nobility of diction, according to Longinus, is beautiful words that reveal the very truth and the peculiar light of thought. Words should have the ability to breathe into dead things a kind of living voice. And the last uh, source of sublime of the sublime is dignity of composition, which includes proper arrangement of words, thoughts, passions, and figures, all blended into a, a harmonious whole. The elevated theme or the subject matter is thus presented as an organic whole that has a marvelous power to exalt the mind of the reader. Longinus also points out some defects such as excessive use of rhythm and condensation of subject matter and theme that may disrupt the harmony of a, a sublime work of art. Longinus characterizes the noble exaltation, dignity of mind and high spirit of the authors of great works and he considers a great work the echo of a noble mind and the outpouring of divine spirit. In the concluding chapter, Longinus laments the decline of literature in his age due to lack of freedom, greed for worldly benefits and excessive love for pleasure. Scott James describes Longinus as the first romantic critic, mainly because of three reasons. His idea that passions are a source of sublimity his protest against limiting the number of metaphors to not more than two at a time, and his argument that a simple conformity to rules cannot lead to literary perfection. The natural sublime that we find in Edmund Burke, Immanuel Kant, Wordsworth and the Romantics finds its source in this Longinian conception of the experience of greatness. The cult of the sublime thus paved the way for Romanticism. Longinus has also exerted considerable influence on literary critics such as Dryden and Poe. The author sublime later led uh, to be recognized as an influential model of close reading and the notion of organic unity, which are the hallmarks of Longinian criticism. 
the sublime as an idea associated with vastness natural magnificence and strong emotion fascinated the 18th century writers and aestheticians its development marks the movement away from neoclassicism towards romanticism that emphasized on feelings and imagination so for the romantics longinus was principally important for his attempts to discover the singular quality which is sublimity that infuses the greatest poetry for romantic poets such as wordsworth and shelley and for many of their critics and readers the sublime was the quality that marked supreme poetic diction and prompted a correspondingly grand emotion in the presence of inspired eloquence on the sublime has continued to influence the theory and practice of modern literary criticism so longinus was a classicist in taste a romanticist in temper and an idealist at heart on the sublime remains an unparalleled monument of antiquity in the field of literary criticism i hope this video on longinus as a literary critic was useful um, thank you so much for your patient listening